Pinan here coming to you from Los Altos, California for the Kusamarian. It's time to yodel dao. Is that yodel dao? IP, intellectual property rights, is a known target for many a crypto project. But Yudal Dao is building IP with composable NFTs. And when you talk about IP, which is ownership, you'll also be talking about governance over ownership, a DAO. It's not only the first time I've seen this done, but it's perhaps the most ambitious technically with social integration in a collection I've ever seen. We're gonna go deep down the rabbit hole here, so stick with me, but even so, we're just brushing the surface. Expect a future episode from CSaint to do an actual tech deep dive while I give you the guts as a user, collector, and artist. Dakota Barnett is the founder of Invarch with Tinker Gabe, founder of Tinker that began five years ago. They are the ones behind Util DAO, inspired to build fair environments for creators and innovators. They are partnering with Remark and building out their own IP sets, creating primitives that can be used to disrupt everything from the NFTs themselves to Discord and GitHub. I'm not even joking. Right now, NFTs are pretty much not decentralized, and in many cases, that was never the goal, as you've kind of got to trust the founder. Take Discord, for example. We've all heard of admin and owner accounts being hacked, even in prominent communities like the Bored Ape Yacht Club, which have ended up with people scammed of hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions. But what if a Discord channel could be owned by the community, the NFTs themselves, like a multi-sig to every admin level change on Discord? So you have an NFT, that is essentially the owner of a smart contract. And that smart contract has launched a bot of which owns, you know, owns the, uh, the server. There's like this, um, this ownership proxy that we're extending in a sense, and we're extending through this proxy, the ownership rights and the ability to, um, make certain function calls. These tokens represents the actual voting weight that you would use in a multi-state call. Now, instead of a normal individual just going in and deleting things or adding things instead someone would propose that call you know someone with the ability to do so would propose that call and then so let's say if they want to delete this channel someone would propose it if a majority of you know that's needed if the threshold that is needed of, of uh dao members through token holders through nft holding if a majority of those individuals in agreement vote in favor of that so then the call will execute, you know, that channel would be deleted. The hacker would have to sweep the floor first to own governance, if there were even enough listed. Or do you remember how GitHub removed Tornado Cache's open source code? With Invarch 4 and cross-chain authentication, NFT communities can own the code, the website, and the IP. Censorship would be far more difficult. And aside from royalties distributed to every artist who participated in that NFT's creation, what about derivative works and special use cases? Here, NFTs can be plagiarism resistant. Simply said, NFTs everywhere will be measured on how similar they are to other assets, even becoming automatically reported to the original creators. With what we're doing, it really is like, yeah, we're cross-referencing and we're indexing first. Well, very first we're computing what we call like a multi-hash or an intellectual hash print, which is a combination of multiple different hashes, which is requires needed when you have multiple different file types and multiple different, um, what's called a rounding algorithm. So different types of rounding algorithms to find matches. Um, so we compute these for assets, we index them and then we cross reference them um, amongst, you know, amongst one another, amongst each other. And then depending on the results, we are able to then automatically update the status of an asset. And then if from that point on, if a duplicate is ever detected, then it's a very trustless process Imagine if an NFT community could be paid royalties every single time their code was forked and sourced. With Invarch's partnerships with Fallas Fat Contracts, they'll have smart licenses, which can do a shit ton. Kind of like smart contracts, but for license. Okay, this was a bunch of techno babble, but think about it this way. If I'm a musician, wouldn't I want my music to be played in more places without having to transfer the music NFT itself? Invarch's IP sets allow NFT creators to grant and enforce commercial distribution to a party without transferring the actual NFT ownership itself. These are through fungible IP tokens which act as access providers linked to IP sets that extend rights from the owner to editor, the viewer, renter, or user. 
If a derivative work uses your music through the smart license and tethered royalties, you'd receive royalties as the original creator. And if a derivative work gets popular and gets put in some movie, everyone from the original creator and the derivatives creator could have royalties programmatically sent to them. We're able to do with IP4, with these IP tokens and the licenses as we're able to technically establish this infinitely scalable tethered network that tracks this connection between all matters of IP and development, and it can seamlessly and trustlessly streamline all of the royalties throughout all of those connections. To take things further, a music DAO consisting of NFT holders could decide to launch a utility token that represents ownership of the group's IP, rewarding DAO participants on every sale of anything created by any member of their DAO. And then they could have this token automatically distributed. On-chain reputation, like active voters, could lead to greater weighting and an advantage in the DAO. But will the wrath of the SEC come down on Invarch building these tools? Well, they have Sonia Prisek, 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 <laughs> legal advisor for Polkadot and Nier behind them. And Dakota himself has worked in government. It seems unlikely that they'll have issues as they are just building technical contracts for agreements between individuals. Profit bearing agreements are determined by these individuals and not in Varsh. In Varsh, similar to Remark, believes in open sourcing everything as well. While competition may arise, it may protect them more. And as to the competition, their response? Sound arrogant. The simple answer is because literally no one else go go find the standard. You know, like yeah, no one else has built this, um, and no one else is to be honest close. Building on Substrate puts us ahead of the gear. If you couldn't build systems like this uh, seamlessly on Ethereum on EVM, um, but you can build them here and make them able to interact and exist on EVM. And I, I think that's the the long-term competitive edge is even if something did more immediately show up, um, there's nothing else that is future-proof and that's just a fact of the tech stack. What do you think? Is this a good approach? Do you believe in open source? Okay, you might be asking by now, what's the value of the utils themselves? The utils are a collection of 1001 proof of concepts on this technology. They look fun, are randomly generated, and are fully composable and customizable with rarity charts to boot. Ownership of a util, however, is ownership of the DAO. While util DAO doesn't own any IP to the DAOist CDK, which is open source, holders will have full IP rights over their utils, and there's always the possibility that the DAO itself votes to incubate and launch a project from within the DAO interested in these IP sets, possibly earning a share over IP over projects that the DAO incubate, with the default starting percentage based on reputation in the DAO, and as individuals continue to contribute to tasks or development of that incubated project, maybe they will be able to earn an increase in their own share and earn more ownership over that project. While nothing can be promised, do you think there might be any upside to UtilDAO? There is a heavy focus on the prosperity of the Dotsama ecosystem. So in the future, individuals can expect UtilDAO to be a, I just want to say, I don't want to say profit bearing, but a, a positive um, financial bearing uh, or generating organization, one that provides services to projects throughout the ecosystem. I'm very confident about future successes of the DAO. Um, of course, ownership over anything would be distributed amongst all of its owners, and that goes for, for any and all profits or spoils, that's a better way to put it. That all gets distributed to holders, but with utils, this is your access into what will be the most robust, true, like a true on-chain DAO that's extremely robust, profit bearing, and will be essentially your ticket and your voice into that organization. Now, do what you think is best for you. Manage your own risk, and I'm just a reporter. But who knows what else Utils will own, with GitArch being developed and perhaps a new censorship-resistant UI similar to Discord? We're gonna be using Discord as our first UI to showcase the functionality of the DAO CDK. However, you could extend this functionality. It can get really intuitive, really crazy. Um, for Discord, 
Um, one day we will be introducing our own um, fully decentralized censorship resistance um, front end ourselves. But the underlying concept and ability of what we're able to do here, um, I want to underscore, is that any Web2 based account ownership, we're able to fully decentralize it. We can completely decentralize the ownership over those accounts. Um, but taking it a step farther, and this is just a repercussion of Inbarks technology and it can, it'll be showcased, like you'll be able to, I feel like GitArch will bring a lot of this to light, but um, you'll be able to actually build the websites themselves, like all the files, everything you can build websites using NFTs and only NFTs if you wanted to. And the entire repository that is that website can just be decentralized, decentrally owned by an entire community. In this case, um, a DAO, which means a DAO cannot just exist and function in a truly decentralized manner through something like Discord, mm -hmm. but everything that that DAO owns. So like whether it's the DAO's website, the DAO's Twitter account, assets, code repositories, anything that is tied to that DAO, everything can be run on chain, decentralized, truly, tr truly transparently. And for the first time, there really, there, there really won't be a single point of failure. Or DAO-owned websites and Twitter accounts, all protected by XCA and Invarch 4. Value is really hard to measure here, but Invarch believes that their wrapper will eventually be required for all NFT standards. With our NFTs, um, they're at the lowest level. They're able to move about and exist throughout any ecosystem while also retaining the power uh, of these enhancements that we talked about, this like NFT DAO functionality. Um, the primitives themselves can then exist and travel across any ecosystem and in a multi-chain future, every ecosystem, and then experience the individual enhancements of those networks, um, second layer protocols and things like that. Now for your favorite part, the near-term alpha. There's a collaboration rumored with Chaos Collective and what can be confirmed is that indeed, every util needs its own theme song. To some, it might be a little thing. I think it's really awesome. Uh, I think it's really cool too when you imagine like a util as your actual, as your PFP, but imagine your util as your PFP across multiple different platforms and your theme song can, I don't know, <laughs> carry right along with you. Rainbow tickets, by the way, are for rare traits and they are not a util in themselves. So keep your other util ticket. Banners boost your reputation score amongst other things. So there will be a limited number of utils reserved um, as earn only. Um, one thing is like some people out there, they're great, they're skilled, they don't have big bags. And I think it's a shame if they can't get into a good opportunity. And most of the time we don't know it's a good opportunity until it's worth too much for the average person to buy into. Mm -hmm. We don't want them to miss out on that. Um, so that's why we are very keen on providing an earn only um, pool of utils, of utils tickets that people could earn and redeem for a util. But then when it comes to like the DAO functionality, there's there's different roles, um, different items as well. We'll kind of, the, what we're gonna be using the items for, so some of the accessories is not necessarily traits, like not necessarily like every like pair of eyes, um, but there will be a good amount, a good amount of items out there that will have varying boosters for reputation, for uh, access levels. And there really might be a token airdrop. Tinker's LBP is coming up in the next few days in the October 5th to 12th range on Basilisk, so we'll know more soon. Now, this is all nice on paper and we've heard ambitious promises before. Do you think this is all too good to believe? Even if they can execute, like all things network effect, adoption is key. Let us know your thoughts. Have a great day, everyone.